Good afternoon. I'm Michael Manfredi. I'm a partner at Weiss Manfredi Architects. And I'm Marion Weiss, partner at Weiss Manfredi Architects. It's an honor to be here virtually with you this afternoon um, on this auspicious moment, the groundbreaking of the U.S. Embassy in New Delhi. For Weiss Manfredi, this is a project of a lifetime. It's an opportunity to re-envision this iconic U.S. Embassy compound and in so doing, redefine our mission to India and our two countries' very important relationships. The design is a chance to give measure through architecture and landscape to America's democratic values and to our enduring connections to India, whose rich architectural traditions continue to inspire us. And it, as Michael said, it truly has been an honor of a lifetime to work on this project and to be able to make legible the State Department's commitment to security, sustainability, and the enduring mission of diplomacy is for us an incredible gift. And we'd like to thank Ambassador Juster, Director Davis, the State Department and OBO's leadership uh, for their support and vision, and also thank all of our collaborators in the U.S. and in India, and especially now B.L. Harvard, who is going to be giving measure uh, to the realization of this great dream. I'm Patrick Armacost, Principal at Weissman Freddy. For the past six years, Weissman Freddy has led a team of architects and engineers through sequential phases of planning and design, and we found great collaborators with OBO, Diplomatic Security, and the staff at Post. The extraordinary community of the U.S. Embassy, New Delhi, has graciously hosted our team in over a dozen trips to India. We found great partners through our New Delhi-based associates for architecture, permitting and approvals, and historic conservation. And we're very proud that the spirit of collaboration has extended through to our tremendous engagement with the NDMC, the Delhi Urban Arts Commission, state and federal agencies within India, and the vibrant design community of New Delhi. So at this point, we'd like to share some images to give you a flavor of the great transformation that will start to occur and which is starting uh, at this very, very important moment. Our design builds on the architectural legacy in India, including the very important historic U.S. Embassy Chancery by Edward Durrell Stone. This is a chancery and a compound that hosted uh, very important uh, diplomatic missions and initiatives since its inception in the late 50s. Our design builds and recognizes that there's a rich architectural legacy in India, both of architecture and of landscapes. And you can start to see in this early sketch the relationship between the new building, the new chancery on the right, and the historic chancery on the left. So sort of a dialogue, uh, if you will, between new and old that we want to be very respectful of. We also are interested in building on the tradition, the kind of sustainable uh, and ecological traditions of screens and patterns that are so unique to India. So you can see in this aerial photo that one of the most important aspects of this project is respecting the truly historic uh, chief of mission residence, the chancery by Edward Durrell Stone, the reflecting pool, and to build on some of the existing structures that are there that are very, very important and useful to the mission. The new design in a way uses the trope uh, or the idea of landscape to stitch new buildings and existing buildings through a central connected green open to everyone on the compound. And that green, as you can start to see, connects both new buildings and existing buildings. The hope is that the design will create a setting where the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. If we were to go for a walk, you can start to see a sort of shaded uh, bosque of trees, um, and both new and old buildings respectfully in dialogue. And as we arrive and, and find ourselves on this wandering path that leads us first to our vista of the, main, uh, the original Chancery building, you can also see that that reflecting pool, which has been honorific in its original setting, is now both performative and representational, as it's a water management addition in, in, in the rejuvenation of the campus. And in fact, the idea of sustainability extends to the idea of landscape with over 400 new trees being planted uh, on the new, the rejuvenated campus. And as we start to look at what it means to be in dialogue, both with the new buildings and the contemporary buildings and the original buildings, that landscape is one that also allows that jolly screen translation to be a place that we can actually shade and provide views. 
And those views are even welcoming as places of shade and shelter with the new consular garden. And in fact, that, that identity is enhanced by the art program. And you could see here the Art and Embassy Consular Services installation, which really makes every element of this experience uh, bathed in that experience of rejuvenation. Most importantly, when we arrive at the new building too, a sense of evaporative cooling um, and the shelter of a canopy guide you into a new gallery that really connects all the people uh, on, in the diplomatic uh, efforts here to actually recognize that we're part of something larger. And as Michael said, the sum of the parts is really a larger whole. Again, it is a great honor to be here at this auspicious moment. And when completed, the campus, if you will, with its new chancery buildings, supporting buildings, improved circulation, and rejuvenated gardens and landscape, will ultimately embody the State Department's enduring commitment to diplomacy, and most importantly, usher in a new era of our enduring relationship with India. Thank you. Thank you. And congratulations.